Hot off the presses of the Astronomical Journal is the Image MM algorithm, a new way to stack. Now let's implement it in SETI Astro Suite. Welcome to SETI Astro. As always, if you haven't gotten the latest update, be sure to head over to SETIAstro.com under Astro Program SETI Astro Suite Pro. This is where you can get SETI Astro Suite Pro with the download here, which is from the GitHub. The mirror site is from the Google Drive site. And I also have a link to the uh, white paper that I wrote about ImageMM implementation in SETI Astro Suite Pro. So very recently, um, a couple science outlets like fizz.org reviewed an amazing new journal entry about a new way of stacking. So this is a completely new, new way of stacking and it's called ImageMM. So let's go ahead and actually open up the article here. So it was published in the Astronomical Journal. It's about a multi-frame image restoration process that uh, the authors have created. And again, it's a completely new way of stacking. It essentially is going to take the median of a bunch of images and then do guesses as to how to correct it based on the PSFs of the stars in those images all at the same time. And it uses this majorization minimization process in there. That's where the MM comes in. And they lay out all, all the math and the groundwork in here on, on how to do it. And uh, it is, and there's also a spot if there's going to be super resolution, how to go, go about using that. And there's uh, all sorts of examples and stuff like this. So um, after, you know, just a very long time of everybody stacking the same way, right? Um, this is a completely new way about going about it. And this is absolutely something we can implement in SETI Astro Suite Pro. I also wrote my own white paper on um, some practical notes and implementation diagram that uh, kind of went through for SETI Astro Suite Pro. It lays out the outline as it's uh, described in the image MM paper, the algorithm as implemented, uh, some code mapping. There's a, there's a really nice plain English overview what, what all these steps are doing and um, I think that's where a lot of people should actually just look and see how this is going about doing its stacking. I have block diagrams, um, some pseudo code in here, and then actual code from the implementation. I have uh, the code available, uh, right? All, all my code's open source. And if you uh, are gonna use the code, uh, you know, be sure to cite the white paper and for sure the actual uh, image MM paper by Sukurdeep. I'm probably really butchering his name, apologize. So let's let's get into SETI Astro Suite Pro and uh, look at the and look at the multi-frame PSF aware deconvolution that is image MM. So when you open up uh, Stacking Suite now, you're gonna see a MF deconvolution beta. Now this is the multi-frame deconvolution or the image MM. And to enable it, you just gotta click the enable MF deconvolution deconvol during integration. It's still going to do all the same process. It still needs to align and register, normalize all your frames. And then instead of going into a normal stacking algorithm, it's going to start implementing the image MM algorithm. Now we have some, some things to talk about here. Um, this is hugely computationally expensive, much more so than even normal integration. So if you thought normal integration was a resource hog uh, you you've, you've not seen this algorithm yet it is best to run it on gpus on hardware acceleration they even talk about that in their paper it was ran on gpus so there's going to be a little little thing down here that says back end it'll probably say none at first when you first get it now chances are when you first uh, get it uh, you won't see any back end it'll say back end not installed you're gonna to wanna to click install, update the GPU acceleration. This is gonna install standalone uh, GPU acceleration for your computer. Uh, it'll in make sure you have Apple MPS available on the Apple side. If you're on Linux, you need an NVIDIA card. Uh, if you don't, it's going to install the CPU version. Uh, Windows, similar thing. It has uh, PyTorch to use either NVIDIA acceleration or uh, CPU acceleration. But just click install and update and it's going to set up a special runtime environment just for SETI Astro Suite Pro and then it's going to go ahead and uh, do the collection of any 
pieces of software it's going to need for the hardware acceleration for you. So you don't need to go out there and manually try to find anything. It's just going to go ahead and download it for you. And then it'll say something like uh, installing PyTorch one time download. That way you don't have to in install it again and again. It's, it's going to um, install into a well, here it says the, the local app data for, for Windows is a, is a spot that a lot of uh, programs utilize. So it's going to do the one-time install for uh, PyTorch for you. And you can see why I did not ship the Windows version. It is 2.4 gigabytes. <laughs> so it's much better to just have you install it locally on your, your own machine uh, versus bloating the binary out for, for everybody. So Apple Silicone is going to use uh, MPS, that's a much smaller download, but it, it'll get PyTorch for MPS. Windows, it's going to use uh, the Windows version for NVIDIA. Linux, if you have an NVIDIA card, it's going to get the, the hardware acceleration rolling for you with that too. For all others, it uses CPU acceleration. So if you don't have a dedicated NVIDIA card or MPS available on your Mac, uh, it's just going to use CPU acceleration, uh, which is still an improvement so you still want to install this on the back end because it's going to be it's going to allow your cpu to, to hyper thread as much as possible uh, but just keep that in mind and now it's done and you can see it says pi storage installed and installed and ready and now on the back end it actually shows my gpu so when it's going to be doing all the iterations and the processes it pushes everything to the gpu and lets the gpu run which is highly encouraged uh, this this takes a lot of compute and running it on a CPU uh, could take a lot longer, an order of magnitude or more longer if you're running it on a CPU versus hardware acceleration. So just realize it is going to be um, a lot of compute behind this algorithm. The other thing to um, know is when the professionals were saying noisy image is they meant noisy professional images. Those are super awesome images compared to what we normally uh, work with in our amateur hobby. So extremely noisy images are not going to get much benefit out of image MM, especially considering how much computation it does take. So I'm not saying don't try it, but if you have like a C star or a dwarf or an uncooled DSLR, you're probably not gonna see the benefits. If you have a good cooled astro camera and you're taking good um, deep exposures, that's where you're going to really um, see some difference uh, by utilizing this. So there's some options here. There's iterations. This is the maximum number of iterations it's going to uh, go up to. It is smart that if it reaches convergence before 20 iterations, it's going to stop. The clip is how fast it's gonna to try to update the model of the image each of those iterations. The original paper recommends two. If you find two being too aggressive, haloing around uh, stars, ringing, things of that nature, you're going to want to lower the clip to make the steps less aggressive. Next we have color mode. Image MM only runs on grayscale. So if you have an OSC image, you're going to want it on per channel and it's going to have to run each channel separately. I talk about that in my white paper as well. And then there's a Huber Delta, which is um, it's a robustness blender essentially to ensure that the steps aren't too aggressive and that satellite trails, cosmic rays, errant hot pixels, things like that don't throw the model off. If you have a negative value in here, it's going to just be whatever that number is times the RMS. If you put a positive value in there, you're giving it an absolute delta number to, to utilize. Instead of like a scale times the RMS, it's going to be the absolute delta. I recommend a negative two. That's, that's fairly robust still. If you want to minimize the amount of dampening that the Huber Delta does, make this number closer to zero. If you want to make it more robust to more extreme swings of noise, errant planes, things of that nature, you're gonna to wanna to increase that maybe to like a negative three. So with all that um, out of the way, we can go ahead and load up some 
uh, images and I'll, I'll demonstrate what, what's going on. Okay, with all that out of the way, I have a, a bunch of my Andromeda, some H-alpha images here. They're 5700 by 3800 pixels. I have enable MF deconvolution on and, and ready to go. And I'm just gonna click uh, register and integrate. And now it's gonna go through the normal steps first. It has to load them all, normalize them all, measure them, pick a reference frame, do the alignment, all that fun stuff. Then you're gonna see it change to using multi-frame deconvolution versus normal integration. And I also have um, a GPU monitor pulled up here too, uh, to, to monitor the, the GPU use as it gets to that point. All right, after it gets done aligning all the stars, now it has to measure the PSFs of each of the frames and develop a kernel size for, for each of them. So that way each frame can tell the model how much to update based on that frame's uh, PSF as well. Okay, after it reads the last PSF, now it has to load all the images into memory. Then right before you see this MFD convolution starting multiplicative updates, you'll see your um, RAM usage drop off dramatically as it has everything compiled. Now it needs to, in order to push everything to the GPU. And after a bit, you'll finally see uh, MFD convolution, the color mode, the Huber Delta. If you're monitoring your GPU, you'll see its memory go all the way up. And uh, now it's going to actually start doing the iterations to do the full Im image MM algorithm with the um, creating the base model and doing the updated models through the multiplicative updates. Um, so it's, uh, it's just going to have to run and I'll, I'll be back when it's done. Okay, and in my case, it just uh, did a couple iterations and then reached an early stop. You know, you may have uh, different results. And like I said, it can go up to, in this case, 20 iterations if it needs to. And then it's going to tell you where it, it saved it. It's going to save it under masters, the master light of the multi-frame deconvolution. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out. And here it is. So it, in, in my case, it, it took about 10 minutes uh, on the GPU to, to do the couple iterations. The whole thing was about 30 minutes uh, with the 20 minutes of registering all the images and then doing the, the overhead pre-populating for the image MM and stuff. But what I want to show you is the difference between this stack and stacking it the traditional way. And this is where this is where the big thing comes in. This is this is why they had a whole paper about it, right? So on the left here is the image done with the image MM algorithm. And on the right is the one that was stacked. If you look at the, the full name, I, I can imagine you can guess what program that was stacked in. And it was done with the, the full suite of options. So let's zoom right up in here and look at the differences. It may be kind of difficult to see, but the image on the left using image MM is sharper there is more contrast more detail more structure in and amongst all this nebulosity than there is on the one on the right the one on the right feels softer it it, it almost has like that shower curtain effect from like a soap opera where uh, th things are just smoothed out a, a little a little bit and they're completely different ways of stacking right this the traditional stack is done measuring Pixel values, rejecting them, averaging, all that shebang. Image MM algorithm is completely different, starting with a baseline median image and then updating it based on all the images at once. Their PSFs to take guesses at the true structure of the image, subtracting off those residuals, updating its model, and continuing on with that process. It's leading to this sharper image just like the paper said it would. And this was not very um, aggressive settings. You can go more aggressive. This was really good data to work with as well. Again, if you have very, very noisy data, uncooled cameras especially, you're not going to really get a chance to see, see a difference here because of how the updates happen to the model. There still needs to be a, a, a fair bit of signal in order to make those updates correctly. But with uh, good deep exposures with a cooled astronomical camera, 
you're going to get a sharper result with this algorithm. And, and again, that's, that's the big thing. It's sharper, just not only is it sharper, but it's a completely different way of stacking. That's, that's kind of the big thing. We've been stacking the same way for a long, long time now. This is a totally different way of stacking, providing cleaner results, crisper results, and it may not look that dramatic, but this is, this is an improvement over the normal method of stacking. There's actually additional structure that's coming out in the ImageMM algorithm that's not in the traditional stacking method. And that's what makes this so powerful. It's, it's a new method of stacking that gives you sharper, cleaner results. That said, man is this thing hardware intense. It's going to fill up your entire RAM. It's going to stress your GPU. Even in um, the author's original paper in the Astronomy Journal, they used multiple GPUs to run this thing on. It is not for the faint of heart, but for those of you with hardware that can support, I would encourage you to try this on your data, especially if you have, if you have a good set of data, it's well worth trying, trying this out. Like here's a really good spot. You could see that there's sharper contrast happening with the image MM algorithm, especially up in this nebula here versus on the traditional stacking on the right where it's much softer throughout. And the star itself is better shaped. It's a tighter star. It's, it's doing what it said it's doing. I can even go a lot more aggressive because the data is so clean on my end here uh, with, with this stacking. But this should show you guys why they were so excited. It's a new method of stacking, like I said. It's giving you cleaner results if your hardware can support it. And I hope you all give it a shot if you can. Um, you should just be able to download the hardware accelerator bit of it for your system and, and run it. Let me know what you get for your own results. This is still in the beta phase of implementation on my end. I'd really like to chunk up the data better uh, so it is less stressful on, so it's less demanding on hardware. But I'm really excited and I, I think SETI Astro Suite is the first amateur software to implement uh, the, the image MM algorithm by Sucredeep et al. So really excited about that. If you're making your own programs, be sure to grab my white paper. It lays out how it works in SETI Astro Suite Pro. It has the link for the codes and stuff that I implemented as well to help you along with your own implementation. But yeah, pretty excited about this whole thing. Please comment, like, and subscribe.